Hello everyone, it's Dr. Jimmy here and we are going to learn the overview of Rappelink today. Recommended book is The Grace Anatomy, 3rd or the 4th edition. Outline of today's topic. Let's talk about the general description. Upper limb is associated with the neck and the thoracic wall, suspended from the trunk with a small skeletal articulation. It could be divided into the shoulder, arm, forearm and the hand. We got here the three transition areas in the upper limb. Here we can see here the green region is representing the first transition area of upper limb. We call that axilla. Let's see from the anterior view. The second transition area cubital fossa. The third transition area carpal tunnel. Functions. Upper limbs functions positioning the hand in the air the hand has a mechanical tool, we can perform a lot of functions with it, and the hand has a sensory tool, we also feel. Let's talk about the movements of joints, especially in the shoulder part. Here the arrows are representing the movements performed by the shoulder. If you take the arm away from the midline and bring it back, or maybe we can see the angle here. This motion is presented as abduction and adduction respectively. If you move your shoulder, especially the shoulder blade, the scapula, what we call that, forward, okay, we call this movement protrusion and movement back protrusion. Moving forward and the backward, the arm at the shoulder joint, we call this movement as a flexion anteriorly in the middle. In the anatomical position, it will be the extension. And if you turn to the backward, then it will be the hyperextension. Some writer may consider it as a flexion and extension only. Here we can see from the front view, abduction and adduction very clearly. Here, by bending the elbow joint, it will be very clearly visualized, move inward and outward. We call that internal and external rotation of the shoulder joint. And this is the movement we call the circumduction. Let's talk about the elbow. Elbow movements as it is the hinge joint, so it is performing the flexion and extension between the humerus and the ulna. But here at this position, proximally radius and the ulna also making the pronation and supination as in that motion the radius head is moving over there. Here we go this motion. At the elbow joint, flexion and extension. The red arrow is representing the flexion and the blue is representing the extension. Let's talk about the, the movement at the wrist and the hand. We got here the abduction and adduction at the wrist. Flexion and extension. And you can see a little rotation. For the fingers, the midline here as the axis and fingers are performing abduction and adduction respectively. Flexion and extension for the fingers. The component parts. Upper limb is formed by the bones, joints, muscles. Okay, in which rotator cuff muscles at the shoulder we have learned in the previous term too. So the bones those that belong to the upper limbs in which the shoulder girdle we got here the clavicle, scapula, for the arm, humerus, for the forearm, radius and the ulna, 
through the wrist, carpal bones, metacarpus in the palm, and the phalanges in the fingers. Muscles. We can see the muscles are holding the upper limb attached with the axial skeleton. These muscles, what we can see in the picture, levator scapula, rhomboid minor and the major, trapezium, and here is the latissimus torsi. If we look from the anterior view, you can see here at the shoulder, this is the deltoid muscle. This is the pectoralis major muscle. If you look from the lateral view, you can see around the glenohumeral joint, or you can see the main shoulder joint. We go to the four muscles, one anteriorly, which is coming this part anteriorly, that is the subscapularis. Posteriorly, above the spine, supraspinatus, below the spine, infraspinatus, and here below this, that is a teres minor muscle. These four muscles are known as rotator cuff muscles because they make the cuff around it. Let's talk about the muscles compartments. Arm is the region that is starting from the shoulder to the elbow. So if we cut it, the transverse section, we will get the two compartments of the muscles and the one bone humerus. So anteriorly, this compartment and posteriorly, this compartment are separated by the septum. So we used to say the anterior compartment is mainly performing the flexion of the elbow and the flexion of the shoulder joint. So this portion, this compartment, we give the name as the flexor compartment. So the backside, the muscle are performing the extension. So we give the name as the extensor compartment. Same transfer section for the forearm. Forearm is the region starting from the elbow to the wrist joint. We go the two bones, radius and ulna respectively, and in between these two bones, we are having the intrusive membrane. We got here again the two compartments of the muscles, anterior compartment and the posterior compartment. Again, same name as the flexor and the extensor due to their function. Let's talk about the relationship to the other regions of the upper limb. As in this picture, we can see the relationship of upper limb with the neck. The nerves and the blood vessels from this region are passing through the axilla, through the axilla inlet and coming to upper limb. Relationship to the other regions in which the back and thoracic wall, as in the muscles, we have already seen that how the muscles are holding it. So here we go to trapezius. After cutting trapezius under that, we go to here levator scapula and the two small muscles here, rhomboid minor and the major, respectively. And here that is the latissimus torsi. It's also attaching at the humerus. Relationship of upper limb with the breast. So, as we can see here, it overlies the pectoralis major muscle and its axillary tail is going deep into the fascia. Innovation by the cervical and the upper thoracic nerve. Upper limb have, is having the connection as we can see that the upper limb complete innovation is coming from the C5 to the T1 level. So this plexus together, we call the brachial plexus or brachial plexus, how you want to pronounce this, okay. And above the C5, the C4 level, the nerve is going to innovate your diaphragm. So we call that phrenic nerve, phrenic actually mean the diaphragm. So when this part here, a little bit trouble or you do a lot, lot exercise with your limbs, then it can also cause a trouble to your diaphragm or vice versa. The upper limb skin patches have been divided by the termination end of the nerves 
So that we call the dermatomes, dermis skin atoms sections. So as we learn here, the nerves are innovating from the C part to the T1, so dermatome will be respectively. So upper later portion of the um, we can see that C5, we will mostly check over there. On the thumb, we check the C6, on the index finger C7, on the little finger C8, and on the elbow, middle side, we check the T1. Talking about the myotome for abduction of the arm and the shoulder joint, checking the C5. At the elbow joint, for the abduction, sorry, for the flexion and extension, we're checking the C6. 7 and 8 for the flexion C5 and the C6 for the C8 we are doing by checking the flexion of the digits for the T1 we are checking the abduction and adduction of the digits the last is here the tendon reflexes so the tendon reflexes we are checking mainly the tap on the tendon of the bicep in the cubital fossa to check the spinal cord level c6 and the tap on the tendon of the tricep at the elbow posteriorly for the c7 so some important tips you need to take away all the muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm innervated by the nerve musculocutaneous nerve until the compartment of the forearm with the two exception media nerve what are those two exceptions on these two muscles those are actually innervated by the other nerve most intrinsic muscles in the hand are innervated by the other nerve except for the thin arm muscles and the two later lumbicals they are innervated by the middle nerve and all the muscles in the posterior compartment of the arm and the forearm are innervated by the branches of the radial nerve. Nerve related to the bone. As you can see the nerves are passing and here at the surgical neck posteriorly you can see the axillary nerve. In the mid shaft the radial nerve literally at the epicondyle, the radial nerve also passing over there, and uh, medial epicondyle, we are having the other nerve. So, in this point, injury may could cause the trouble to the nerve, too. This is a skin innervated by the major peripheral nerves in the arm and the forearm as the axillary, radial, mesocutaneous, median, and the ulnar. So these patches need to remember for the sensory in the vision on the skin. And this is the posterior fear. Superficial vein. Vein are going deeply, same root as the arteries, but the superficially they are having the different root. And uh, very, very important for the dorsal venous arches from the hand going upward medially and laterally respectfully we got here mesolic and the cephalic vein on their course they are also joining at the cubital fossa very important and the famous vein we call that median cubital vein okay very important to withdraw the blood or intravenous puncture orientation of the thumb Thumb is positioned at the right angle to the fingers. So as a result, its movements are different from the fingers. As we can see here, the flexion extension performing in this way. And it's also performing another motion. Abduction, abduction. And here, a very important opposition of the thumb with the other digits. Okay, so after learning today's, you could be able to give this five easy questions answers 
This is something you'll have, we'll learn today. And thank you very much. If you have any question, you can send me an email. Thank you. Bye-bye.